said, I'd like to introduce our presenters. Um, let's see, the first is going to be Andy Rose. He is a senior product manager with Apogee with a focus on video and ResNet products. Then we have Dima Kopalinko joining Andy, and he is a senior software engineering consultant from Unicon. So with that said, we are going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to hand that over to Dima. Thank you, Cherise. And uh, hello, everyone. As uh, Cherise mentioned, uh, uh, my name is Dimitri Kapolenko, and I am a senior software engineer uh, for identity practice at Unicon. Uh, I'm also one of the core committers of the CAS open source project. Uh, and today, I, along with Andy Rose from Apogee, I I'd like to talk about the value of open source, uh, which CAS project is, uh, that allow us to build uh, unique business features around uh, single sign-on functionality and bring it to market rather quickly. Well, Apogee uh, had a unique uh, business use case uh, around uh, delegated authentication, uh, dynamic discovery, and configuration of authentication sources uh, for their uh, multiple tenants, which Andy will talk about in more details a bit later. Uh, with CAS uh, server being an open source uh, project used by a wide uh, array of organizations around the world and with uh, well understood, tested and pluggable components, uh, after an initial analysis of uh, business use cases and uh, CAS server capabilities, it was discovered that CAS server uh, would be a perfect candidate uh, to implement these custom uh, uh, custom extensions for Apogee, uh, which Unicon identity team had embarked on doing so. And uh, um, well, this is not a deep technical presentation. Uh, but here, I just want to highlight uh, a few CAS components uh, that provided a foundation to build this custom solution on top of. Uh, with uh, CAS's flexible configuration model, uh, represented by uh, plain Java classes, allowed us to persist configuration for uh, different tenants in relational database and later retrieve those config values and built and registered various authentication handlers uh, uh, dynamically during the so-called discovery process. Um, custom Spring Webflow states uh, were created for the discovery process, where each tenant would enter their school name and then the database lookup would be performed and any particular authentication handler for, for that tenant would be built on the fly. Uh, and registered with the CAS's uh, authentication event execution plan component. Um, and then each school or tenant, if you will, would have their own authentication mechanism uh, registered in a database. Uh, some examples of authentication handlers uh, built uh, for various tenants uh, are uh, LDAP authentication handler, custom web service authentication handler, Radius authentication handler, uh, database authentication handler, and last but not least, delegated authentication handler uh, based on the flexible uh, Pack4J library with a SAML2 IDP delegation model, which a lot of schools in this system uh, configure and use. Um, and now uh, I want to conclude my brief overview of the system from a technical point of view with the statement that open source nature of CAS uh, had an advantage of building this solution and getting it to market rather quickly because it's uh, well understood, tested and open software, which uh, has a lot of uh, extensible components for building unique business systems around web single sign-on functionality. Um, and with that, I'd like to switch to Andy for a more detailed overview of uh, Apogee's unique use case and a demo. Thank you. Thank you, Dima. All right, over to you, Andy. Thank you, uh, Sharice and Dima. And Dima, let me uh, make sure I can advance the slides. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, just kind of reintroducing myself. Uh, my name is Andy Rose. I am a senior product manager at Apogee. Uh, at Apogee, the, the products that I manage are our Stream 2 video IPTV solution, uh, as well as our residential internet um, solution, ResNet, for, uh, for our clients. So Apogee serves really just higher ed clients. Um, we A large part of our business is the video and residential internet. We're expanding into more and more of managed campus and, and other uh, more managed services, uh, kind of doing some interesting things with uh, location analytics and, and some other elements. Um, we have, uh, with the different services that we have, we we really use authentication with SSO wherever we can. Um, so we're using single sign-on everywhere. We have clients that, that are at that level to be able to do it. Uh, we have over 100 clients currently using SAML or, or CAS a type of SSO. Uh, and we have another 70 clients or so using um, a, a, the RADIUS system, which is really the, the RADIUS over TLS or RADSEC connection to our uh, internet service, which uh, that's the connection to the network access control servers that are the backbone of our, um, of our ResNet system. So um, we also have several other uh, type of uh, custom auth types, um, and we use multiple services that call into CAS. So it's a pretty um, complex system for us that we have set up and, and actually evolved over time. So the, the CAS solution that we put together with uh, Dima and the Unicon team um, you know, really started out for Stream 2, our IPTV product, where we needed the flexibility for SAML and CAS and for custom web auth, um, where working with schools that didn't have SSO, they could kind of work with a, a middleware system that we already had set up for the IPTV service. Um, really, the, the value of open source has been allowing us to continue to leverage the full capabilities that have grown with the Perio CAS with our custom solution um, to be able to extend and manage things like the radius over TLS um, capability, um, use multiple services going into this. Uh, and at this point in time, I think we have over 300 clients uh, going through our CAS system and three different services, uh, Stream2, ResNet, and actually our campus engagement service, uh, the administrative functions of it use the CAS system as well. So we are using this more and more to cover uh, the, the widest possible breadth of our client base that we can um, so that we can get everyone using best practices around authentication uh, and, and putting that into the, the services that we sell. Um, so I will now kind of go into the configuration screens for CAS so you've got something to look at more than just slides. Uh, give me just a second to share screens and I'll start to go through this. So here first, um, obviously this is this is our staging server. So there is a bunch of uh, test sites uh, in here uh, as we've kind of tested different elements of this. Um, all of this is, or almost all of this is gonna be dummy data, but I kind of wanted to start with showing you, um, this is our ability to add a new institution. You can kind of see here the different authentication types that we have. So Nordia is, is the name that we've given our, our web authentication that goes for the, the Stream 2 system. You know, we can do CAS, LDAP, SAML. Apogee is actually our um, uh, specific, our white list of users that we enter in the username and passwords and then share those with a client. So that's actually been very helpful for managing vendors at different sites um, who get uh, specific credentials sent to them. And then Radius, which again is the, the RADSEC connection to our, um, our NAC servers for our internet service. So I'm not going to create a new institution today. I'm going to show you a couple that are already in the list. Um, so the first one that I'll go to is Apogee Azure. This is a SAML connection to Apogee's Active Directory. Um, I've done a few different things to play around with this, but kind of walking through the screen, <clears throat> this has um, kind of at the top left just some identifiers that we use. Um, kind of for different systems. The domain identifier we actually use with our ResNet system, the SAM ID and the Nordia codes down here actually for our Stream 2 system. So we have different elements uh, that are appropriate for, for different uh, services that flow through this. Um, 
And you can see actually, <clears throat> sorry, the custom message and some of these other ones are, are stream two specific. So this will tell you that you're not actually eligible to, to receive stream two um, because we do have this eligibility attribute uh, and eligible value. Um, so here we've set it to scope for everyone logging in, but this has allowed us to work with clients so that they can give us a gating attribute essentially for authentication to the stream two service. So we can make sure that it's just going to the appropriate groups of people, whether those are just students living in the dorms or for some schools, it's a whole campus that's kind of a separate campus, um, but it's able to be defined within, in this case, the schools or actually in this case, Apogee's Active Directory, and then shared to us from that. Um, underneath that, we've got um, kind of the, the key element here to, that we get is the metadata URL. So in this case, this is actually the link to the SAML app uh, that, that Apogee IT set up for me um, from our uh, Azure AD. And then uh, you can see several other identifiers like the UID identifier and then down here the attribute map mapping for first name, last name, email, and I'm currently testing some stuff with uh, using campus address for, for an alternative purpose. Um, so you can see that one filled in. Uh, so this is really a very basic setup where we are coordinating with the school. Uh, we get this set up. It usually takes um, really just a, a little bit of communication and then some quick setup. Um, we handle a, a wide array of different types of schools on this, um, large and small. Um, some schools that have uh, 2FA or, or, or multi-factor authentication on their side of the IDP doesn't actually impact us, but it uh, we kind of flow through and work with whatever the, the school has set up. So that's the SAML authentication. Um, now, real briefly, I'll show the, uh, for which is actually kind of very different, uh, a radius uh, authentication example. So this is another demo school or ABC University that our sales team uses. This has, again, a lot of the same uh, fields at the top. We can actually tie it into um, Stream 2 if we want to. So we've got a couple of codes in there. Um, the attributes are on the left. But going back to the top here, we don't actually have to use many of the fields that are in this um, to connect to the, the Radius server behind the scenes. So it's really focusing on the correct protocol, um, which is the MSC HAP v2. And then setting up for the correct um, authentication and accounting ports, um, the shared secret, which it's okay that you can see the shared secret that's actually in the IEEE documentation for RADSEC, so it's not really a secret. Um, I guess just between the two systems it is. Uh, and then we've got the IP address um, for talking to the RADIUS server. Uh, and then down below, we actually have the um, certificate authority certificate that is how we're able to uh, go back and forth using the RADSEC protocol. So over the course of time, we've gotten this implemented. We have continued to work with Unicon to be able to upgrade the, the TLS uh, capabilities. So I think we're able to do TLS 1.3 now. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So this, um, again, this is one of the wonderful things about uh, open source is we're able to really get everything quickly updated wherever anything needs to be updated with Unicon regarding any type of vulnerabilities that are found, any type of upgrades that we find that we need to meet particular customer needs or meet new product needs, which has been incredibly helpful for me because it allows me to focus on more of the actual products that are being created on the Apogee side, like the, excuse me, like the video and ResNet product that actually deliver, deliver those services as opposed to the uh, authentication element to that. So um, that's kind of the walkthrough of uh, our configuration page, uh, two different types. Um, <clears throat> from here, just to kind of give you a sense of what this flows into, um, I can open up and we can go to uh, really our CAS test login. 
And here you can kind of see from a user perspective um, from our stream two, they actually arrive at a page where they can select their institution on our ResNet side. We actually have worked with Unicon so that the, the calling uh, page will have the institution embedded in it. So they'll actually go straight to the, the login page for that institution. But here, uh, I'm actually kind of going in this, this back doorway where we're just going to look at the attributes um, that are passed through. I'm just going to use the, um, the basic approach, select Apogee Azure. So this was the first of the institutions that we were looking at. And this will, again, connect to the Apogee um, Azure AD system. Uh, just a second. There we go. As we go through Microsoft's uh, login, uh, we'll see that uh, we come up with, ah, yes, the end user video agreement. So this is actually a little bit more tied to our Stream 2 service because we're going in through this path as opposed to the school path. So we have had uh, Unicon implement our end user video agreement here um, for users to, uh, to hopefully read uh, and then click the checkbox and accept. And then you can see, um, this is kind of the landing page. This is actually the page I might be most familiar with because it's what I do for every time that we're testing and making sure a school is set up. So we can kind of get to a page where we can see everything that's been handed to us from the um, from the school's ID IDP server uh, and make sure that that matches up with um, what the school expected to send us and what we expect to see as we've got also the um, the CAS system attributes listed as well. So it's kind of our way of double checking everything works. And a lot of times um, the school will give us uh, test accounts or vendor accounts that are not actually eligible, eligible to use the system. So uh, we'll be able to kind of check the eligibility requirement here. And this is as far as we can go, but it's actually as far as we need to go to be able to see that all of the data is correct uh, and we'll be able to successfully launch the particular service um, that this school is going to. So that's kind of the, the end of, uh, of my demo. Um, so let me stop screen sharing for me. So Sharice, you might have taken over control again. I did, thank you, Andy. It helps if I take my mute off. <laughs> Great presentation, guys. So now everybody, you can go ahead and take your mute off if you wanna go ahead and ask questions. We have approximately eight minutes remaining. Let's see, my question, is it possible for the user to self-service through your portal? So can the user input their detail themselves and be approved by your side? Um, that actually would be done through the, the service itself. And typically we don't actually do that because the universities don't want us to. So, you know, in, in most setups, um, the school itself will say, well, we'll put the users that we want to have access in the Active Directory system. Um, so we don't want any kind of external users. Um, with that being said, where we don't have um, an SSO system, particularly for a residential internet service, um, there, when the user creates their account, that account is created on the, the network access control server. Uh, and then when the user logs in, they log in using their, their credentials when they created that account. So that is self-service for that particular instance. But so it's kind of uh, in some places and, and not in others. And in fact, the, the web auth method um, the, the, that was labeled as Nordia is it also the, the, actually the same way. So for, for that one, that's kind of the, the basic path is the user can create their account. Uh, and usually in those instances, we have to go back and forth with the school and make sure, you know, are these the right approximate number of users uh, since, you know, it, it can impact what they're being billed, for example. So um, we, we do allow that through the alternative auth methods, not through SSO. All right, thank you very much, everyone. All right, I think we're good for today. Everybody enjoy the conference. And this thank will be posted for further review. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.